Hello beautiful people, let's talk. It's nap time again, so while I have this five minutes to ten minutes to share things with you, let's talk about the great pacifier debate. Yeah, new moms and dads, you may not have even known it, but that is an issue. The online world is a swarming with opinions, so don't go online. Just stay here in our little YouTube bubble of comfort and cuddliness, and we'll go over the pros, the cons, the do's, and the don'ts of the pacifier. Here's some pros. It soothes your baby, just like hugs and cuddles. It must be great. But it is a temporary soother, and we'll talk about that a little later. Another pro is for premature babies, it can help them gain weight. Because it encourages suckling and nursing, it strengthens the muscles in their mouth that um, would have developed had they stayed in utero a little bit longer, and it will encourage them to nurse later when they are permitted out of the NICU and home to breastfeed or bottle feed with their moms. It is also believed that pacifiers can help reduce the risk of SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, if you don't know what that stands for, um, especially in premature babies. They don't know exactly how, the jury's out on how, but they do believe it is helpful. Some believe it's because it helps they sleep lighter when they're um, using the pacifier. Others believe it's because it causes a barrier between them if they roll over. But for the first year, it does seem to help reduce the risk of SIDS. Another pro is it's easier to wean than thumb sucking. Now, pacifier versus thumb sucking is a completely different debate. That one, I don't know if I'm ready to get into that. But um, with a pacifier, when you don't want it, you can just throw it away. The thumb, there's like the hot sauce thing and the wrapping it up and all kinds of stuff. The pacifier, just throw it away. You'll have to deal with some tantrums, but hey, it's a child. There are always tantrums. So those are your prawns, prawns, pros. Let's deal with a couple cons. For pacifiers have been linked to um, encouraging, I guess for lack of better words, middle ear infections. Um, it encourages the buildup of fluid in the ears and babies that use pacifiers have been known to have more ear infections than babies who do not. Um, this one is, the jury's kind of out on it, but another con is nipple confusion. Now this was my worry uh, with my first and with my second. Um, because the action or muscle action needed to um, nurse on a breast and to use a pacifier, the suction is different. And so it has, there is a concern that your baby may have nipple confusion. And this I do know, infants are picky and they do form preferences. So it is possible that they could, prefer, could form a preference for the pacifier over the breast. So it's suggested that you wait at least four to six weeks before introducing a pacifier to your newborn. And that will help you um, establish your milk supply because the only thing that they're nursing or suckling on is a breast. So your body will be able to regulate how much milk they actually need. Um, and it'll encourage, encourage your baby to have a preference for that over anything else. So wait a few weeks before you introduce it if you can. Um, another issue, another con, um, is it can cause dental problems. Um, this isn't a wives tale, it actually can happen. Um, especially for with extended use. It can start to affect the formation of the, your little one's front teeth, because that's where it stays, um, and cause them to have an overbite or um, push their teeth forward. So that also comes with extended use, and we'll get into the do's and don'ts about that in a second. It can be habit forming, we talked about that. Um, nursing is comforting, period. Um, so babies can form habits. You do it over and over and over again, just like if you get them in the habit of driving around in the car to go to sleep, they'll always wanna go in the car to go to sleep. So babies, habits, routines, they do that. It can become a sleeping crutch. Um, a lot of parents unintentionally do this, again, a do and a don't, is if their baby is asleep, it puts them to sleep, they stick it, They the baby will push the, pacifier out and parents tend to stick it back in. Don't do that. They didn't want it, let it go. Um, but it can become a sleeping crutch. But I also know that babies can use the breast that way as well. My first definitely did. Um, when my milk supply went down after the first year, she was literally only nursing to go to sleep. It's habit forming there as well because it's comforting. Um, if you do decide to use the pacifier, let's get into some do's and some don'ts. Pacifiers, like I said earlier, are temporary soothers. 
use it sparingly and use it as your last option. If you're at the store and you can't nurse them right away, then hey, use it then. For us with our second, if she'll take one, we would use it for her in the car from point A to point B because she's just not a car seat baby. She doesn't like it. So she doesn't need to nurse. Her pass, her uh, diaper doesn't need to be changed. She's simply just upset and I can't hold her at the time. So that is when we would use a pacifier. It's for, the pacifier should be your last option. After you've changed them, fed them, um, burped them, done all the other comforting things you can do, then use your pacifier. It should be gone, if possible, by their first, maybe their second birthday, um, just to keep them from forming a habit and wanting it long term, okay? Um, it's just easier to break that habit by then. Once you start introducing food and things like that to them, they can get distracted in that, and they're not quite big enough to specifically ask for that yet. Once they know what it is and they can search for it themselves, once they're mobile, it can get a little more, a little bit more difficult to get it away from them. Um, what's something else? Don't put it in your mouth. I know I'm guilty of this as well, not gonna lie. Um, to clean the pacifier off by sticking it in your own mouth and giving it to the baby. I know some of you think that's gross. Moms are gross, just like babies. Um, don't do that. Um, the bacteria in your mouth can cause cavities for your little one later. So let's, let's break that little gross habit. Um, what else? I think that's about it. So those are your pros, cons, your do's, and your don'ts. But I think what's most important that you should know is that in the end, if you do give it to your baby, it's up to them. The picky little people may not even take it. That my second, she doesn't want one. She doesn't want it, she doesn't want it, she doesn't want it. She's like, mom, it's not a boob, I don't want it. So it's possible you go through all of the trouble of getting the most expensive, um, fancy dancy uh, pacifiers possible, and they don't want it. So I also suggest buying a couple different ones um, and trying out the different styles to see which one they do and don't like. And if you find one that they do like, buy a couple of those, maybe in a couple different colors, and switch them out on occasion to keep your baby from, from, from forming a favorite. So your kid only wants the blue one, and if you lose the blue one, they lose their mind. Let's, let's avoid that altogether, okay? Oh, also, use um, pacifier clips don't tie it to your baby that's a choking hazard and if your pacifier starts to degrade and get cracks in it it's time to replace it i think we've covered everything and i think nap time's almost over so i will talk to you guys again soon um, please like subscribe share and if you have any other topics that you'd love to hear mommy talk about um, i'm not squeamish we can talk about weird baby poop stuff if you need to i'm all for talking about weird baby stuff Anyway, also, I'd love to answer questions about marriage. Maybe we can get my husband on this channel as well. He's awesome. Anyway, yes. So, yeah, I think I said everything. Pacify. Do not pacify. Have a great day.